Hello and welcome to this short video about Blueprint Energy Auditing Software. My name is Chris Dunham and I'm the Managing Director of Carbon Descent. Just uh, what I'm going to do is a brief presentation and then I'm going to show you the software live. Um, so, uh, brief presentation, uh, Carbon Descent, we are a company that produces and sells software and also sells consultancy associated with that software generally and Blueprint is one of four uh, products that we actually sell and one of three that we produce ourselves Energy Pro we are agents for in the UK. Uh, so why did we produce decide to produce Blueprint and what does it do? Well uh, being energy auditors ourselves we felt that the process was ripe for improvement. Um, you may be uh, doing this at, at the moment, um, but um, often the usual process looks like uh, looks a bit like this. So you go out with a clipboard on site, take down uh, details on on paper of energy consuming equipment and information about the building. Then, if you're very disciplined, you uh, immediately um, go about performing your analysis. Um, if things get in the way, as they often do, two weeks later you come back to your notes. Uh, try and understand what you've you've written and put them into your spreadsheet that you might have semi-automated and then uh, eventually you get to a point where um, having taken an old an old report you've copied and pasted um, the new uh, analysis and graphs and so on into into that word document and uh, hopefully remember to, to change all the old uh, client details to the new client and you can then send it out well that process it felt as though um, it could be could be streamlined and um, a lot of time could be saved not particularly in going in the in the site visit itself but um, in the analysis and generating report bit and uh, it does not rocket science obviously to um, come up with the idea that you could take down that detail on a tablet computer um, and and then automatically generate recommendations and automatically generate a, a, a report in Word which you're still able to, to customize. So that's what we've done with Blueprint and as you'll see I hope that we've designed the whole process so that you can customize how you go about um, collecting the data, what data you collect, how, what measures you, recommendations you, you make, how the savings are calculated associated with those, uh, what the Word report looks like, what, what appears in it from the the audit and so on, all of that is customizable. What does it cost? Well, these are the prices um, that we set. So, an initial fee of £5,250, which includes a one year license for up to three users, and then there's an ongoing annual license fee of £2,500. An additional for additional license um, for additional users, it's 30% of those costs, and that includes covers all um, supports, updates, and upgrades to the software. So when we produce a new uh, a new version, that's all part of your fee. You're not paying it again for that. Um, training options, two days or uh, an additional advance uh, day. So it's basically three hundred pounds a day, and all those prices are excluding VAT. Um, we are open to discussions about um, monthly. Uh, payment plans rather than a sort of single one-off payment. So if you uh, if you want to get in touch with us um, to order software at carbonsent.org.uk is probably the the best way. Okay, I'm now inside the software itself. Uh, this is Blueprint version 2.3, and as you see, you can actually set up um, information, uh, the background database, and other items here so you could have the, uh, the the data all sits in a database at the back which can be set on a shared server if you wish it's also designed here so that you can use a, um, a PC and then uh, a tablet and you can actually check out your survey onto your mobile uh, tablets that you take out so you don't end up editing two different versions of the, the software so that's all been thought about so here you can see um, across the top various menus so uh, you can uh, see the organizations and you can uh, register an organization and here you can see that for instance for this one we put in that it's a, a school and um, and so on the contact details and address and if from that it then picks up benchmark information for uh, for, a, for a school in this case 
a project is automatically created um, when you put in an, an organization and then you can associate uh, a number of audits with a single project so you might be doing 50 audits for um, Essex County Council as in, in this case um, of, of schools so they can all appear as one uh, as one project or it might be that you're um, you're a facilities manager or an energy manager of Essex County Council and you want to uh, name a project related to a single set of surveys in a year and then through onto audits here so uh, you can then set up your audit and if we double click on this one you'll see that we have scheduled the um, we're, here is the the survey uh, data collection form so here we're actually we've actually completed this uh, audit already and you can see um, that if you um, if you edit the site you can see that we've set up the site with the number of classrooms in this case the school obviously the, the room names follow from the type of um, type of building that this is um, you can have a number of buildings on the site here we've just got one and here you can you you can set globally an annual usage for the building and we have this annual usage profiler so you can create annual usage profiles um, which can be applied to uh, everything through from the, the building usage through to um, lighting in, in an individual room and so on so this profiler is used throughout the software um, and you can then go into if you want to set up detail for an individual uh, room you can actually create annual usage profiles for a, for a specific room um, the head teacher's office might be different to I don't know the uh, the secretary's office and so on uh, and so and so you can you can uh, create these annual usage profiles for individual rooms and you can put in individual areas so moving back to the collect survey data form uh, you can see that all of these tabs have data items that we've already filled in so in this case we're looking at electricity use uh, here we have fuel use and building summary um, walls glazing and so on through to HVAC generation type of boiler efficiency and so on so all of this I've already completed and you simply to add things in you simply uh, enter the information here and press add appears down below now uh, all of this I should say is customizable so you can choose if you wanted to perhaps do uh, a survey that was only about renewables you could create a survey type that only had a renewables potential tab in it um, with perhaps you might still want to cap, uh, capture electricity and, and fuel use as well so you might just have three tabs and you could go out and, and have a survey set up to only collect that data so you don't have to have all these tabs you don't have to collect all this information all of this is customizable to you the idea here with um, setting up the different rooms is you can collect information against a specific room so as you're walking around the building you can say well I'm now in the reception room um, in, in the reception classroom sorry and I can um, uh, there are the lights in here there are four five foot T8s and I'm going to add them in against this particular room or it might be for some of these items for instance electricity use that you're adding these in against the whole building or indeed the whole site because they the data that applies across the site rather than to a specific room. Now electricity use and fuel use are spe specific uh, cases and, and in this um, uh, in this version of the software we've um, th this is something that you used to have to enter enter manually but you can now simply import consumption data um, it's asking me here uh, it's telling me that I've already imported consumption data do I want to replace the old data well, I don't want to do that so but uh, you can see here the the process um, that you can import data in different forms so if it was half hourly um, metered data that you had uh, you might have it in one day per row and so on but the idea is that you can import in different formats from Excel spreadsheets and so on so I won't go through that now um, but I'll just show you 
the data that we've already imported uh, here so you can see we've got some some half hourly metered data in there I won't go spend any more time on this I'll flick through on to the analysis form so here we are on uh, I pr press run analysis and it's now telling me that I've actually missed some data items well in this case standalone HVAC um, would be things like fan heaters and so on well uh, we're imagining in this, this happy case there are no uh, standalone systems so we're happy to move ahead without uh, inputting that mandatory mandatory data mandatory data is something that you can set set yourself set up those flags so um, here you see the run analysis form and the idea here is that you click through each stage here annual resource consumption proposed measures audit outputs and finally generate reports so I've already I've already done this so I won't uh, repeat the process it's, this is a short video um, but you can see we set up some emission factors you can set choose from a drop down list or create your own uh, pressing annual resource consumption what happens there is CO2 emissions calculated if you haven't supplied energy use data for a whole year it will factor it up to uh, to a year or if it's longer than a year choose the the, um, the most recent uh, period and then it's actually created a, a, a benchmark against uh, the typical so here we're better than uh, typical for this primary school that we're looking at and here you can see the half hourly data for electricity and gas and what you can actually do here is you can create different views of the data and have them appear in in your report and this might be something that you do at the moment uh, where you're actually um, looking at half hourly data and you want to um, uh, you want to analyze that and, and show it to the show it to the client and say well actually you know looking at a particular period um, in uh, um, you can see that uh, you know you've got some consumption at the weekend or so on when the when the building w should have been um, unoccupied what's going on there so things you can you can filter these views to um, to focus in on a particular period and then by pressing save they these all these these uh, views of this data actually then appear in the final report when we generate it uh, so that you can um, you can provide that uh, analysis to the client and you might want to then an annotate um, on on the uh, views that you've produced so energy loads it calculates through onto proposed measures now you can see I've already um, I've already been through it so these are it automatically generates uh, recommendations here um, through from uh, these are the measures that we we have have currently but obviously it's um, using measure inclusion um, data to decide whether to recommend these particular measures in this specific case so because we've said we've got um, fluorescent lamps it's recommending um, T8 to T5 adapters because we've said we've got uh, tungsten lamps it's recommending CFLs um, there's potential for PIR so it's recommending that so you can see that there's a manual step now to go through each of these uh, automatically generated measures and decide whether we're happy with the, um, the assumptions that Blueprint is making about these measures and it may be in some cases well here you can see I've said well actually we don't want PIRs to uh, apply to this particular set of set of lamps um, and so on here you can customize the, the the capital cost the number of sensors that you need in this case for PIR sensors um, TRVs again um, uh, the capital costs associated with each uh, TRV and the calculation of savings so everything is here that goes into the calculation and you can decide whether to include the measure and you can then uh, customize or change how the calculations are made that appear in this final output table that you get when you press order outputs so these are the this is what's going to get recommended and appear in the final report so something new that we've added here is a totals row which you can toggle on and on and off obviously you need to be aware of compounding issues if you're using this and then finally 
and you can see we've got capital costs again this is customizable so you can decide what appears in what uh, headings appear in this table but as a standard we have capital costs the kilowatt hour savings um, the cost fuel cost savings and electricity cost savings co2 savings simple payback lifetime co2 and so on and finally just remains to press generate report it's telling me it already exists but I'm happy to overwrite it and we should now get uh, in Word what it's doing is pulling out information and images from the audit itself and popping those into a Word report which you can see it's brought up here and obviously this is something that you can customize and put on your own logo and and so on um, but you can see it's pulling up data it's pulled up those consumption graphs that we um, created uh, benchmark information of the benchmark graph it's put in there and then the measures themselves so text about the measures um, that have been recommended so obviously it only puts this in if you've um, only puts in this text if this particular measure has has been recommended and finally our table of recommendations um, that you saw uh, within the software so um, that is in a nutshell is uh, is blueprint but briefly before I finish I'll just show you that you can um, the, some of the customization features so you can um, this manage area allows you to um, create different audit types so here you can see we've created a general survey and a simple uh, audit um, here are the measures so you can either um, if you click on one of these you can you can change you can edit a measure and when it's included and default default capital costs and so on or you can create your own um, the calculations again these are different calculations used within the um, within the calculation of the recommendations so again you can you can modify these or create your own and um, here you can also see data types so these are all the data items that appear throughout blueprint and you, again you can you can modify these or uh, create create your own and these obviously these data items if there's something you want to collect data about say hand dryers or something isn't isn't in here you can add that in yourself and decide how that appears in the in the survey data collection and other things you can customize here you can put in staff members annual usage profiles charge types associated with bills and um, update the degree inf degree day information which is used to calculate uh, the benchmark so that uh, in a nutshell is blueprint thank you very much in for listening